Hi, I'm Chris Gardner with your tip of the day from Practical Help for Your Digital Life. You can find all my tips on Facebook under Practical Help as well as on my website. I hope you'll join my member-supported website where I post tip sheets with helpful links and detailed how-tos. Please join today. Today's tip is about how the bad guys use social engineering to fool you into letting them hack into your computer and what you should watch out for. These are often tried in the workplace but can also happen at home. Some of the tried and true methods are you're entering your workplace and someone's right behind you, maybe with arms full of packages. They ask you to hold the door for them. Someone is impatient and acting frustrated because they need to get inside your building and the guard won't let them in without a pass. They get more and more upset until the guard gives in or someone else vouches for them without even knowing them. Someone's hanging around an outside designated smoking area. As workers come and go, they just follow one inside. Once inside, these people find creative ways to get into your computer, such as someone comes into your cubicle or office saying that they're from IT and need to update or check your computer. They may even have a company badge. This could also just be a phone call where they ask you to give them remote access. Someone comes in and asks to test or fix something under your desk like a plug. While there, they put a little device between your keyboard and your computer to record your keystrokes. Social engineering can also take advantage of your trust in email or social networking websites. For instance, you get an email from someone you know, at least by the email address, saying that they're trapped somewhere and asking you to send them money. You get an email asking if you've seen someone online about you, say a blog or a news story. Of course the link is fake. Or you get an email with a link from a business or bank asking you to click and log into your account or verify your information. Or you get an email, phone call, or door knocker asking for donations to help a worthy cause, like last year's Hurricane Sandy relief, or with a free gift or gift card offers. Or maybe you see a post on Twitter or Facebook with a shortened link, like the popular bit.ly. Who knows where that link will take you? Don't fall for these and other scams. Hackers are creative and inventive, coming up with new schemes every day. It's unfortunate, but important for you to be wary and suspicious, and if it's free, isn't there always a catch? Lastly, you need to know that anyone can send an email that looks like it comes from someone else. It's ridiculous that emails can be so easily faked. Social networking sites are a little harder to fake, but it's certainly doable. And anyone can knock on your door with papers or identification that they ginned up themselves. I'm sad for the legitimate nonprofits, but there are just too many scammers out there these days. So please be careful and suspicious. And if you find my tips useful, please share them with your friends. Clicking the like button is also great. And don't forget to become a member of Practical Help for Your Digital Life. Thanks for watching.